Christian Lonnie Demery. Oh, my man Lonnie. Unmute yourself, Lonnie. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. This. What's up, Lonnie? Okay, how you doing? Oh, good, buddy. Uh, I'm working hard in this recruiting class and what have you with uh with the uh uh with the disadvantages now in in terms in terms of how Kentucky has to recruit that being not being able to get uh, face to face contact with these young men, get them on campus and show them you know show them around, show them what what you have to offer. Uh, the new coach has come the the one that's come aboard and I guess another come aboard too pretty soon. Uh, how, how important uh, is it, and do you do you get involved with their recruiting techniques, and how do you know what you know how, how they can help the program in recruiting? So you saying, Lonnie, about the new coaches? Do I get involved with them? Tell them how to recruit. Well, that uh, I didn't understand this question. Oh no! Uh, well, with this twenty-one, no, no, do you get involved in, in their ability to recruit? What do you say? Lonnie, say it one more time. You like breaking up. He on mute. Uh, would not have a face. I'm oh, mute. yes. Oh, I, I heard you. I heard the question. Hey, so Lonnie, yes, to answer your question, uh, it was kind of difficult this year. So we had to use a lot of Zoom and uh, FaceTimes with your phone and actually I probably FaceTime and, and our staff probably FaceTime more kids than people, normal people would probably even talk on the phone to you when you would talk, you know, at a, when you said a telemarketing, something like that. This whole screen went out. Okay. okay and uh, so that was a good technique for us. But because the 21 class was part of when we recruited the 20 class, a lot of them guys have been on campus, even the guys in Ohio, even some of the guys, uh, the guys in, uh, Michigan, a lot of them guys have been on campus in 20. So they knew who we were. And so when we FaceTimed them and did Zoom meetings, their parents already have been on campus. The difficult one is gonna be, somebody asked earlier, is the 22 class because they have not been nowhere, you know, on campus or anything like that. Okay, John Hale. Vince, how do you think this 21 Kentucky high school class compares to the previous groups you've recruited in this state just overall? I mean, not even just the guys you got, but just the overall talent depth level. Over previous years? Yes. Yes. Well, I would have to say the 16 class was pretty good with uh, Drake and Landon and uh, Robinson and uh, Cash. But this class, Kentucky high school football is really getting good. I mean, and I'm not saying it wasn't good, but I'm saying it's getting good to where we can recruit our own kids here and, and sign about seven or eight kids from this state. Uh, I think the athletes are more better, and that's probably only been like five years, but take a kid like Jagger Burton, he's an old lineman, but probably runs under probably a 4'7", 4'8". Got the tail crowd, probably runs, I know he runs a 4'2", 8", 4'3", 2". Uh, so if I had to rank them, I'll say the 16 class because of what them guys did, we went to four straight bowls. So it's yet to be determined with this 21 class, but it's, it, it was it was guys that we needed to get, you know, along with the tight end and uh, the running back. And, uh, you know, uh, probably like, I'll say seven of them guys was a very need to get, and a lot of other Power 5 schools really wanted them guys. Josh Moore? Vince asked Mark about this, and I know you, you spent a lot of time work in Kentucky and it maybe ate into your Ohio time. I guess, how are you concerned at all? I assume you're not concerned at all about that, you know, letting go of that leash a little bit though up there. I'm, 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 I, I go, I'm, I'm coming back. It's Here's what you got to understand, Josh. What happened was we did so well in Ohio that some of the guys Ohio State kind of slow played in the years. They immediately jumped on them guys like early. And then when you see like you see how good Cincinnati doing. A lot of them guys, and this is not a knock against Cincinnati, but a lot of them guys did want to come here. They just, it was just that, you know, for whatever reason, you know, you know, some of the guys we didn't go on. So you're looking at a combination of Ohio State going now offering, if you got the top 30 in the, in the state, they're going to offer like the top 15. 
And in that range, I would always get like maybe the sixth or seventh or the eighth or the ninth guy in the state. Ohio State has offered a lot of them guys. And so now with me being in Kentucky and like Coach Stoop said, if we didn't have, you know, COVID, I would have been doing the groundwork in the spring and then going to close in this period when we really do face-to-face and home time, uh, home visits. So it's just because of what happened with uh, the cor- uh, coronavirus was a little bit to blame, but the three we got out of there, them were the three we zeroed in that we wanted. Uh, so it was, you know, it's a combination of both, but no, we, you'll see us significantly in Youngstown. We would be in, I mean, not a Youngstown, but it's, I'm from here. We, we would be in Ohio. Trust me, 22 class is pretty strong. Hey, and the sad thing about it, the, 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 the 22 class in Kentucky is very strong too. So I'm gonna have my work cut out for me. Yeah, Vince, could you just talk a little bit about uh, Kaya, what you guys liked about him, and then also the guys you're going to be bringing in now for him to throw the ball to? Well, Kaya, we, we, I mean, he's an athlete. And you like to, you know, your quarterbacks, I learned this from Joe Montana when I was in Kansas City when they had bought Joe Montana in. And he was, he was talking about how he was a basketball player, and it's sometimes being a point guard, that's exactly what you want your quarterback to be. And we watched him in that state championship game. And that was my first time really seeing him. And I was like, wow, I, I fell in love with the guy. He, he's everything you want. He's a good decision maker, he has a good arm. But the main thing is he's athletic. And in this league, you know, Larry, in this league, you gotta have some athleticism at quarterback to sometimes escape them guys getting up field. And the guys he gonna throw to, I mean, we, we could go down the line. Uh, the receivers, the Kale Crowd is 4-3 four, four, all day. Here's what people don't understand. The kid has a 46 inch vertical. And I'm gonna say that again. He has a 46 inch vertical. That's what makes the kid explosive. That's why Oklahoma, Ohio State, a lot of guys offer them. Uh, Christian Lewis and, and Magwood and, and, and Devon Ross. I really think we got three good players that's playmakers, which I think with the new system is gonna go very well. If you watch the Rams, they being four wides, five wides. Uh, they are gonna fit right into our new system. What about Dingle? Oh, dude, you know, that's, that's personal. Dingo, you, you see, the reason why we got Dingo, I really believe it came down to the last probably three games he watched, if you if you honestly asked him. And they see the way we threw the balls to the tight ends, and he really fell in love with that. And, uh, dude, he's athletic. I mean, Coach Stoops, I think he was going to fire me if I didn't get him because he off, we offered him as a sophomore, and we really recruited that guy for the next two years. So I'm, I'm very excited to have him, very excited. Justin Rowland. Hey Vince, what's up, man? What's up, buddy? Uh, I I thought you were wasting two years of your life recruiting Dingle. I didn't think there was any chance he was going to Kentucky. Was it a little bit of a surprise that you were able to win him over in the end, or did you have a reason to be confident all along? Come on, Justin. You know me, man. We've been dealing with each other. Here's what I'll tell you, though. You kept you were telling me that, and it really was. I thought we were gonna get him. Then I it turned a little bit, and then I thought we was gonna get him. Then it turned. I actually think we got him the last, probably about, I'll say about three weeks ago, three, four weeks ago, me and him had a good conversation. I talked to his mom and dad on the phone and we were going back and forth. And, you know, I just told him, you know, what he meant to us, what it would be to the state. And that that thing really did go down to the wire. So you were right on that. And I think it flipped within days, but it was, he was kind of torn. He was torn. And, uh, you know, I told him, I said, man, you can't make me look bad. I, I can't lose you. So so I'm, I thank God that we got him. He's a great family. The family is great, and he's going to be a great player here. Nick Roush. How did his brother play into this equation? How did, how did Justice end up at UK? So I'm going to tell you, like, people think, like, we – it was like a pra- package deal. Always – we have our guys, Chase Heike and them guys that's in the recruiting office, it came up that Justice was going to probably transfer, and he went to the transfer portal. And I told people this, he was a part of the old staff where he was an outside linebacker. New staff comes in, move him to, they go to a four three, they move him to a down lineman. We, we had a need. If we didn't get Jordan Dingo, we still was recruiting justice. And it just so happened, you know, you know, a little magic here and there, we just worked it out together and it was a, you know, package deal. But we, we are very, you get an older guy coming in with some experience, with a great work ethic, work ethic. And he kind of reminds me 
you know, just talking to him. He kind of reminds me of uh, Josh Pascal, like the same, same type of personality. So if he can be like that, that's going to be a big, big, big uh, boost for our defense. Derek Perry? Yeah, Vince, going back to the Kentucky high school football scene, back a few months ago and Frederick Douglass and North Harden played, I think you guys had four commitments in that game. And then obviously for future classes, more guys that you're recruiting. Just how significant did, did that game seem, having that many guys – uh, who were going to be playing at Kentucky. Huge. It was huge, very huge. And and that's what I'm saying. That's a great, great question, Derek, that you see that in Ohio. You see that in, you know, Georgia. You see it in Texas where multiple committed guys playing against each other. I rarely think you've seen that in Kentucky. I know when I first got here, you you might even see, might, you didn't even see one guy. So that was a very uh, game that was very important for the state, but also important for the state of Kentucky, Kentucky high school football, and I heard Coach Stoops talk about them, the, the high school football is really, really, man, it, it, it's going to another level. And there's a lot of young talent here. I mean, you know, we, I, I can't say names, but you guys know even that 22 class who probably be the main guy. And uh, it's just, I, I take my hat off to these coaches because the, the, the product and how they being developed and coached is really the reason why that we are uh, recruiting them now and recruiting, you know, a lot of them schools. You saw talking about North Harton and uh, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, man, what's the name of that? Name? What's the name of that school? Frederick Douglass. Them two programs are very, very solid in the state and we will be recruiting both of them schools for a long time, both Big Pete and my man, you know, my man to North Harton, I really, I really love him, man. He, he just, Coach Thompson is a good dude. And love what I love about both of them coaches, their student athletes come here with great GPAs. You know, sometimes you're recruiting kids and you got to try to get them eligible. That is not the issue with North Hart and, and uh, 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 also Bowling Green. So let, don't let me throw that out. And then Frederick Douglass, but Bowling Green, the same thing. So I, I love this state. The football is great. We're going to see some great football. We can't watch it, but it's going to be some great games uh, this weekend. And uh, I get to see, I wish I could see uh, Dingo play this weekend. That's going to be a great game uh, this this Saturday. Vince, you talked about the playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. Considering the way you guys struggled on offense at times this year, how were you able to hold on to those guys? Oh, that, that, that's a lot of praying, talking to the Lord, and just the, the I think we held on to them because you got to, First, start with Coach Stoops. Uh, a lot of these guys, they met him, they talked to him. Uh, he's a great guy to play for. They know he cares. Uh, I think, I mean, honestly, just just this state and how the people is like. A lot of these guys see things. They get on. You get on Twitter now. You get on the internet, and you can see like the love that the BBN has for Kentucky football. But probably the final thing that I would say. If this was a different year where guys can take visits, we might have really been really holding our breath. But because of what happened with COVID, uh, guys were not able to go other places. You can do all the Zoom means you want. We, a lot of our guys been on campus. And then where, when COVID hit, you know, it was just shut down. So I just think with guys not being able to go places and take official visits really benefited us. It's kind of uh, building off that. What were you telling recruits over the last couple of weeks as Mark was searching for the new offensive coordinator? And then after it became apparent it was going to be Coach Cohen, what were you telling them about his offense? Well, I actually went with Coach Stoops on one of the interviews, and I could just tell what his, I knew what his philosophy was. And, you know, he shared some things with me about he knew it was very important. So I didn't say names, but I told him what type of offense we were – uh, bringing in and then it started leaking out like the couple guys that were being interviewed uh, I was in contact with a lot of recruits a lot of our guys mainly the skilled guys I mean let's be honest the skilled guys wanted to know and then once we hired uh, Lee I mean like Stu say everybody everybody uh, say nothing but great things about him uh, it's going to be a great offense we, we still going to you know we great at running the ball so 
just add off of that stuff and what he's going to bring in. You watch the Rams play, and I, I just told our receivers that that was being that was committed to us or ready to sign. Just watch the Rams, and then you'll see why you should get excited. So it was it, it was a thing where once the change was made, I got a lot of I did I got a lot of calls. I got a lot of calls, and and that was rightfully so. But I think the guys trusted me and me and Mark. And they 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 knew that he was going to uh, get the right people in here, get the right system, and you know the rest. I mean, we also had to hire an old line coach, so there was things that we had to tell people that hey, this is coming. Just you know, be patient. And Josh Moore, Vince, the on Liam. I know the offense, you know, does what it does as far as recruiting guys, you know, one who might get excited about that. But what does he bring? Just what is his energy or where he's familiar with? What does that kind of add to the recruiting picture? Let me tell you something. I, I texted Liam uh, yesterday, I believe, you know, to congratulate. I knew, you know, he was, I kind of knew it was him. And I wanted to say, man, it really made my job more easier to recruit skilled guys because let's be, let's be honest. Everybody want to be in the system with you a, a running back, a receiver, a tight end. You want to be in a system that's like basketball and, and get the ball to receivers. But also running backs, if you watch in O-line, his, his system really showcases us for our line to show that they can run block, which they are, we are very good at, but also you know being able to pass, pass pro. And that's going to make guys make a lot of more money. So he's, he's a guy, man, just, just the people I talk to, straight organized, know what he wants to do, know where he wants to go with the ball, know how, to, and he's a good communicator with the quarterback. And just alone, if you communicate with the quarterback and he knows where to go with the ball, you will probably win one or two more games just alone with that because there are throws that need to be made and sometimes they're not made and uh, it can be the difference of you winning the game. Okay, we'll do these last three questions with Lonnie and Jeff Drummond and then Mark Story. Lonnie, go ahead. Mute, Lonnie. I was at I was at the uh, uh, game with Nas Harden and, and uh, Frederick Douglass. Um, uh, Frederick <coughs> Douglass. That's my old school. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, I, and, and uh, I saw uh, Lavelle Wright, uh, mm -hmm. and, and I was very, very impressed with the physicality of this young man and uh, how he breaks tackles and makes people miss. And and also he can run he can run over people and around people so to speak, uh, and uh, based on what you, uh, UK's ability has been in in uh, developing running backs, talk about Lavelle Wright and what he brings to the program. Lavelle Wright is one of the greatest young men that I've met, and I've recruited a lot of guys, and a lot of them guys are good kids. He's a three point eight student. Uh, he's, he's he's he really loves God. A young guy like that, he loves God. He's a leader. And I was so happy to see him on that stage because I think people really, they didn't really know about him. And I said, man, Lavelle, Lavelle told me the night before, he said, coach, they gonna know who I am. And he said, I'm gonna be the reason why we win this game uh, tomorrow. I watched Lavelle when I went to watch Oxidine his junior year. And I text coach Stoops and coach Grant and say, listen, I just watched the back, it kind of mind me. We always say Benny. But it kind of remind me of Benny and Chris Rodriguez type, you know, very tough catch out the backfield, uh, pick up the blitz, but we'll get them tough yards. And he's going to be one of them guys. He came to camp. I'll never forget. He drove up here by himself, came to camp and earned a scholarship when he already had offers from other places. That tells you a lot about a kid. I'm telling you, the, the Big Blue Nation really going to love this kid. He's he's going to be involved in a lot of stuff off the field, but he is a he's exactly what you want in a young man. Uh, very smart kid, and I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's an honor and a blessing to get him. Hey, uh, Vince, you were asked about the the Ohio guys or, or, or lack thereof earlier, but you you did get a couple of them. Yeah, you know, those those uh, prototype Buckeye State uh, offensive linemen that uh, John Sharman has had a lot of success with, and just curious about what role he had in identifying those guys early and, and helping them become. Wildcat. 
man, you're about to make me get emotional because, you know, I, I, I think about my guy every day. And, uh, yeah, uh, so he, he, he's a guy, when we start out and start looking at recruits, he's a guy. Uh, hold on. Um, man, you, that guy caught me off guard. I'm sorry. Uh, Coach Slarman is a guy that knew how to identify linemen. I mean, we are getting debates and, uh, man we we get we get in debates and he would tell me he say big dog that's that's the guy uh he and I, I mean I, I it's hard man I, I really uh, it's it's hard he, he has identified all the guys, the linemen we bought in. We never, I never would uh, offer a guy without his uh, approval. And you're talking about a guy that really had a culture to know how to bring guys in. We would, we would go tag team. We would drive to Ohio. We would drive to, you know, we'd be in Kentucky. If it's, we had to go further in Kentucky somewhere and, he just was great, and he, it was all him. He was he loved these these two guys we got from Ohio. He he, he we got on them very early, and he, he said Paul minded him up Stenberg, and he thought he he thought Dave would be a real big time guy would be when he leaves here. You know, Dave Dad played in uh, the NFL like thirteen years, and. Uh, you know, it's hard on them guys. You, I don't think people really understand, like, John really was involved with these linemen. And and then, you know, when that happened, you know, I always check with them guys just to make sure they were okay. Uh, going to miss them. Going to miss uh, the people that he identified. Make no mistake about it. You see the type of line we had the last couple of years. And, uh if I can identify and be half of what he what he uh or what he bought, uh, we'll be pretty good for the next couple of years. Okay, last question is Mark Story. Hey Vince, two things. Um, how how big was John Sumrall and the success he had in Georgia and, and and a little bit in Alabama to this class? And who's your under the radar guy? You usually on this day give us somebody that's not getting enough attention. You think in the class? So who is that this year? First, John, John Summerall, is a, I'm telling you, John Summerall is a good recruiter. He gives me a, a run for my money. Like, he, he really, like, John, I can see John coming in my home and and recruiting my son and us falling in love with him, say, hey, you're going to play for this guy. He's a very personal guy. He can, he can uh, adapt to any situation. He don't see color. He don't see economic status. He's just a guy. He's a good guy. And, 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 it, and it, it, it's not surprising to me, the guys that he signed and uh, down South and really went into them, into them States and got them guys. He just, a, he's kind of like a people. Buddy here, uh, John Sessions wall called me the people champ. I said, John might be giving me a run for that because he, uh, he's just a guy, man, that I, that I even like being around meaning like, and if, if my kids were younger, they'd go play for him. So, and then what was the other question? Uh, sleeper. Oh, the sleeper. Yes. I'm telling you who I think is going to be a sleeper in this class. And I think it's going to be, I got, I got two guys. I'll say, because they might say, oh, you just saying it because he's your guy, but I'm going to tell you. Jamar, Jamarius, is I'm saying that right? Like Jamarius, Jamarius Deacons. He's six six and a half, 275, 83 inch wingspan, runs a four seven, low four seven. He's gonna be a guy that I think like, like that SEC type body and athleticism. I think <coughs> him and then I think uh Devontae Ross. 
people starting to see these, but I think he's going to be, he can actually contribute. I think early, I think he's going to be a real, really good player. We all know the guys at the top of the class, you know, the Kale, Jagger, uh, all them guys, Chauncey, but I think them two guys you're going to be talking about. I really do. I do.